Wise here today again, and it's actually tonight because <clears throat> we are staying late to actually finish this up. So this is the last part of segment three. Uh, remember, we're going to get into this fast, and uh, we were finishing up on the turn sequence, and we're finishing up with actually the uh, cleanup phase. So here you are, guys. Um, reading this directly from the book. Uh, the last thing you do on your turn uh, is draw cards. If you have uh, fewer than five cards in your hand, you must draw cards from your deck until you have five cards in your hand. After drawing cards, check your hand for the wound cards. You may use one effect printed on uh, one wound card in your hand. You may not use effects on any other wound cards you have in your hand or, or wound cards that you draw as a result of using the first wound effect. The first Nightfall release only has one type of wound effect, but expect other types to be released in expansions. And that's why, you know, I, I re really wanted to buy the Martial Law expansion, but, you know, I'm going to step into this myself and go through something first, always. You know, I'm never going to just jump right into everything. And um, I'm bringing this as if I was a customer, so you can see me. Like how, usually if it's something I don't know, and I'm not recommend, I haven't been recommended, uh, to it by a friend or, or so some trustworthy place this is how I approach it so you can see that like you know literally uh, you know you're not seeing the preface but I am an informed buyer but now as uh, getting into this I, you'll see how I, I, I approach this as something that's like well th this was a, a you know a terrible waste of money or this was an investment and I wouldn't spend any more money or maybe it's possible but you know we already know all of us already know you know through reading this it's best going to be played with three three people I, I give at most I probably wouldn't play it with any more than three people um, probably you know and I think probably be awesome at two people too just straight up so um, the tips uh, the tip for this section is there is no hand size limit. A, a larger hand lets you uh, combo out, basically. I, I, it says here, a larger hand lets you chain more cards, get more kickers, and discard for more influence. Do all you can to get more cards. So, you know, of course there's not going to be any infinite me uh, mechanics in here, or infinite combos, and you probably aren't going to combo out, like, on the first or second turn. Now, probably through the the matchup uh, how they have the matching system which will take now I see this uh, looking this over and over will take some time uh, to get used to because you 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 know to get the kicker cost in your stack you know I, and I mean it's it instead of calling it the chain I would rather call it the stack but you know to stick to the the, the fluff it's called this the uh, the chain but I'm gonna say stack Pretty much on the stack, you've got to make make sure the moons match, and you can keep you know setting off other kicker calls, which is just like a storm or like uh, madness in the fact that you know you would discard to get an effect going. So, I mean, there's a lot here uh, because you, you're you're going to be discarding uh, down to do effects to harm the opponent, and you know uh, you're also going to be matching out these moons. For example, you're going to match the the top of the moon to uh, one of the colors in the, uh, the, the top moon uh, of the card that the opposing player laid on the stack, the chain. Um, and then the kicker cost moon has to match the moon in the, uh, the previous stack. So let's see a card here that would match. Okay. So technically, like... Uh, Yeah, okay, so technically, like, Death Grip um, wouldn't work. So here we, I chose Bad Smoke. It's Yellow Moon. Bad Smoke, Yellow Moon. And uh, Flank Attack, uh, it's Yellow Moon. So, like, let's say one player previously laid that, which had a kicker cost, which wouldn't match. But I would still lay this uh, bad uh, effect, Bad Smoke, because it can match. So, one once I get into it and I figure out the draft cards and how the layout system sets up and then I get Doug and our other players over here from the collection crew uh, we're going to try three to four person games and that way you hear uh, uh, our review from a 
four person game standpoint, three person game uh, standpoint, and so forth. There is, uh, you know, another section that ends the game. So ending the game, it, it, that's where they finally gave us uh, the the complete objective of the game. You know, because usually I like to see that right away, like pretty much like a mission statement or a thesis in any abstract. You want to you want to you want to know the objective right away. Well, they didn't really give you a clear objective until the end. They didn't really tell you that, uh, you know, like a clear, decisive ending victory until the until you read the end of the book so um, and, and they and and I think the reason they did that they ended it on a note of how to end a tiebreaker and like if you had a, uh, extenuating circumstances how you would end like a super hardcore epic tiebreaker uh, and I think that's why they tried to do that to add extra fluff content and make the ending game paragraph longer so, when the last face-up wound card is taken from the wound stack and given to a player, the game ends. Finish resolving cards in the chain, I, I want to say stack, but okay, or damage from attacking minions, depending on which phase it is. Keep track of any additional wounds received by, received by using the face-down cards in the wound stack and previous XL wound cards if necessary. Uh, you know, and then you're just gonna without without me having to read this, it, in the, especially the tiebreaker. You just go down and count the wound cards. Uh, whoever has the most wound cards. For example, you know, if there was three players and me and another player and then the third player. Let's say the third player didn't even win, but me and the second player were in a tie of seven wound cards. We both had seven wound cards, and you break it down and look at what type of wound cards. Uh, we had. So let's say I had one bite, he had one bite, I had four burn wound cards and he had three uh, burn wound cards and he had three, um, I'm sure, what's the other wound? I, I don't know if it's shot, what, I, I don't know, the, I haven't even looked at it, but there's three different types of wound cards, but you know, an example of seven. So you would just look at the frequency you know, average mode and, uh, you know, mean uh, mode, just look at the frequency, and then, uh, basically, I, I would have lost, because I had four burn cards, for example, and he had three burn cards out of the seven. So, and, and if you, ha and then they go on to say more, if you had an extreme epic tie in that situation, like there was no tie there, what does it say? Uh, if there is still a tie, the person closest to the right of the... <laughs> this is so funny. I mean, that's ridiculous. If you can't decide the tie at that point, it just says the person to the right of you... Uh, wait. The person closest to the right of the first player wins. <laughs> so, like, if I'm the dealer, the player to the right of me wins. I mean, so the third... The, so the third guy... So the third guy who wouldn't even be doing anything, who was totally out of the game, wins. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That is hilarious. What a stalemate. Like, oh, we can't even, like, do crap. You know, we can't, like, by figuring out a clear, decisive victory. So we're just going to give the win to this guy. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Um, now, after this video, uh, you're going to see uh, us either having actual gameplay sessions or some gameplay review. Uh, I'm not really sure what we are... Um, I'm not sure what we're going to get into as our very first step, but no matter what, we'll have the full coverage. Alrighty, so you guys take care and have a good evening. Hello, it's Doug from Dub's Treasure Store. I'm here with David and we are uh, setting up the game Nightfall. And this is basically what your cards will look like when you get them all separated according to class and character and stuff. And we're going to go through the rule book and teach you how to play the game. Yep, and Dub here. Hello everyone, also with Dub's Treasure. Uh, so, where we guys, uh, this is a separate segment. Um, we are going to go uh, make other videos to have a clean touch up of the entire walkthrough of turn sequence and everything. But this is also new to us, so we want to show you guys how we set up the game. Um, so where we left off, because uh, we already set it, uh, started setting the game up without showing you, 
but it's a good it was a good transition spot so where we left off was to shuffle our wound stack you have three different types of wounds here is the stack of wounds let me make sure I'm in the yes and it's a pretty big stack but um, it's bleed bite and burn so it wants you to shuffle we shuffled the uh, we shuffled them and then the next step says to find the draft cards the draft cards have a watermarked draft over the artwork said to shuffle them and that is where we left off uh, but so you know what we have separated like Doug already said let me get into position what we had already separated were 18 piles of minions and 12 piles of action cards and it took us a while to figure this out but first of all you have two different types of minions you have uh, a start, uh, six piles of starting minions and then you have 12 piles of advanced minions basically think of it like that your advanced minions are uh, their names are titled in red the starter minions which are free that's why it's important are uh, their names are uh, titled in yellow so you need to separate those stacks and basically for however many people are playing you make the, a deck for them because this is a deck building game uh, you, so you, once you've separated the beginner uh, minions from the other minions you, you add two copies of each card into each deck forming twelve cards in each person's deck then, then you have the twelve action cards over here that are separated and that is where we are at we have shuffled the we're getting ready to play so we have shuffled the wounds uh, stack and we have shuffled the draft stack here we have made we're gonna have a guest come here to uh, have a start with a three person game so we have made three decks here here and here um, and now that is where Doug comes in to start reading the um, part where we left off Actually, hold on, I think he, no, he went a little too far. Sorry, guys. Well, the next part is we have to shuffle the draft cards, and then each person, or each deck, gets four draft cards, and they're laying face down. Shuffle these bad boys. Yes, but uh, do they choose their own? Yes, yeah, so see, at this point, we're going to have to stop, and I will segue this, uh, I'll splice this video into the next one, because... We need our guest here for her to choose her own draft cards. And then after that, the rules go into us actually starting. So that will be really, really great. And yeah, the draft cards are definitely easy to find. You know, I was worried about it, but it was the very last cards I opened. So thanks, guys. Hello, this is Doug here with Doug's Treasure Store. This is our last installment of the game Nightfall. This is Sam, and Dub is also here. Hello, everyone. And this, we left off where we uh, separated all the cards to get ready to actually play the game. Two oh. most important. The two most important steps where we left off were with the wound cards and the uh, draft cards. Now Samantha is taking over on the uh, rule book, so she can whoops, so she can correct me as I go along. But as we were separating, uh, you want to know that you're going to have 30 piles in total. You're going to have 18 piles of minions. There's two different types of minions. We'll get into in a second, and you're going to have 12 piles of action cards. Then you're going to have a pile of wound cards and a pile of draft cards. So the next two steps would to be to get ready to set the game up. So first we need to go by shuffling the uh, stack of wound cards and shuffling the draft cards. I'm going to have Samantha uh, shuffle the draft and I'm going to have Doug shuffle the wound cards. You can actually shuffle. I can. I've already kind of yeah, you can go ahead and shuffle them. I've already kind of shuffled them up prior to setting this up, guys, so they don't have to spend a lot of time shuffling. And we are definitely going to play this game all the way through.
So, as we said um, in the uh, actual beginning of our very first video, the very first segment, we said we're going to show you how to play step by step. Well, we went through the turn sequence for you. So, let's review the entire step of a turn. You have the combat phase, the chain phase, claim phase, and then the cleanup phase. So, after we set up, uh, we are prepared to start playing. So, first, we're going to set out the draft cards. Uh, we have shuffled all, once we have shuffled the wound cards and the draft cards, I already have read the rules, so I know for a fact for a three person game, we're only going to have a stack of 30 wound cards. 10 wound cards per person. So if you're two people, 20 wound cards. Four people, 40 wound cards. For us, Doug, go ahead and count out, uh, go ahead and count out 30 wound cards, please. All and right. then, We've shuffled the draft cards, so yes, we want to deal four draft cards face down to each player. Go ahead and deal the draft cards four, uh, four to each player. And then we're going to set the remaining draft cards uh, down aside. Set the remaining face down aside, over here to the side. So now uh, each player chooses one of his four draft cards and places it face down in front of him. So choose what you, you'll end up choosing one of your four, your, your first draft card face down. What we're going to end up doing is passing the draft cards to uh, the person to the left of us. Did you go ahead and choose one of your four draft cards, sir? Face down. All right. Now, the second action of this sequence is to, um, let's make sure... Players pass their remaining three draft cards to the player on their left. So here's my three draft cards, you pass me your three. Then you choose one more and put it face down in your pile. These essentially become your private archives, is what we're working on. It doesn't matter, just go ahead and choose something. Put your card face down, Doug. Then players pass the remaining two draft cards to the left again. Each player takes one of these two uh, pass cards and places it face down in the center of the table, forming the commons stack. Face down in the center of the table. Put the third one face down in the center of the table. Okay, we're all new to this, guys, so you guys are learning and watching along with us right as we're in this process. So this is actual live footage of our very first game. Second, uh, it says to place... Finally, place all the draft uh, place the final draft card in each player's hand back in the draft card section of the game box. So the last three draft cards are done. These are out of the game. Okay, put those back into your box. Take the deck of the draft cards, set aside, blah blah blah. Place the rest back into the draft card section of the box. Okay, so now we have our common stack. Turn all the draft cards faced up. We will turn up, turn your draft cards faced up, and this is the remaining side. It's not exiled, but it was removed from the game temporarily. This is the remaining draft cards. These are not these are not the three remaining draft cards that were in our hands that were a part of our private archives. Those are actually removed from the game permanently. These are just set aside temporarily. Okay, so after you turn the common stack up. The, once you turn the three stack of commons up, they are added to this stack. And take your hands away from that so people can see the drafts. Okay, so it says exact wording. Replace each of the draft cards with the corresponding pile of seven order cards to create the archives. The draft cards are not used during play. They are simply used to help set up the game. And I realized this right away from playing Pokemon drafts. So now what we have to do is we take our two, our two uh, draft cards that are our personal archives and we got to go find those and we will get that whole entire stack. So let's start with Doug. Doug, what are your first two draft cards? Uh, your Death Grip and Ivan Wardinsky. Okay, Death Grip is an action card. I believe it is... Chica, chica, chica. Do you see Death Grip? Here's Death Grip. So that replace. Look, move your hands so people can see that. 
The death, the actual stack of death grip cards replaces his draft, as you can see. Then the uh, Ivan, how do you say that? Ivan Raditsky replaces his draft personal archive here. Now, setting up. Uh, the rest of the game, we're going to do that same process. So without you speaking, we're going to... Right? Yes, but keep them... We, we put these draft cards away. Doug's jumping a step ahead of us. Okay. But stick with us, because we're going to just... We need to finish organizing Sam and at my cards. And these are our personal archives. The, no opponent has access to your personal archives except yourself. But everybody has access to the common stack. <laughs> I need the ghoul summoning. Where is... Okay, I got ghoul summoning. Now, we have to take out the draft cards, guys, and match them with... Coming around. We have to match these draft cards. Because, okay, we're going to get the Lilith stack. Lilith stack is in the game. Her draft card's there. Then Blaine Cordell. Help me find that one. There he is. So set these aside. Once you start getting them, put the draft card with them so you know that's the one that you're using. You're using those stacks. And just keep going down the stack of commons until you get the ones. You're never ever going to use any of the yellow minions because that is a part of the starter deck that I'm going to show you how to make for each player. So we need to find Sir John Treville. Here, I'll give you a stack so you can help. Alton Hickman. And there's going to end it. Yep, and come set them up here. And there's eventually going to be uh, a total of eight stacks in the top, the commons. So you should have one, two, three. We should make. We got to make eight stacks of commons. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. We have uh, four drafts replaced out of our common stack in the middle. We need four more. Oops. And we have a rend and tear. So this is, so far we've used three, five draft cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> Those are all there. Okay, and then you replace the draft cards. So, essentially, you're going to have... Huh. These will not be used. The ones that the draft cards do not replace, they will not be used for the rest of the entire game. And that's just... Nope, that one's removed. So, this is setting up the game. So we're going to move it in view for you so you can see it. And in the commons, it sets in the center of the deck. You have four, you have eight stacks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then this is a three-person game, so it would be bigger the larger you go. Now, setting up, is this the stack of 30 or is this the stack of 30? That's the stack of 30. Okay. So... Keep the, keep the wound stack in the center of the board as well. And since this is a deck building game, this is how we're going to build the deck for each player. There are two types of minions. You basically think of it, the minions, the minions that have the, the title in yellow are your beginner minions. They are free. Uh, they are free influence to come out. Basically influences like mana or your casting cost of your creature. This uh, st uh, number profile in the top right of the card is the strength. This is the health, so when they take the damage, you just tap it or rotate it 90 degrees to actually show that it's taking the damage. So, to set up the beginning deck for each player, you have two copies of each beginning uh, cre uh, minion in everybody's deck. So, for Sam, uh, it would be two of these, two of two zombies, Two Charlotte Reyes's, two JJ Mate uh, Mateegs, and so forth. You see it. Uh, and there are 
five, let's see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six stacks. So she's going to, her starting deck is going to always be 12 cards, and it's always going to be these two uh, copies of these two cards each. Count your deck, make sure you have 12 in your deck. Yes. Okay, so now we make ducks. He has two Yuri Korvovs and so forth. You guys get the point. You're smart. I don't have to explain it to you. That's his deck. Count that. Make sure that's 12 cards. And then mine is two and two and two, 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 and two. Now, we were going to turn this into a drinking game to be fun, so we could throw in uh, s just some fun laughs for you guys. But first, we had to break this down so you guys could all see. Now, after you have built the decks for each other and, and all of the players, the uh, beginning starter minions are gone. You will not use them for the rest of the game. Okay? So, now that we have our decks in hand, we take the draft cards that were left in our private archi archives and they are gone as well. All the draft cards are removed for the game. They are solely intended for just setting the game up. Now, we shuffle our decks. Everybody shuffle your deck. Go ahead and shuffle your deck. Once you shuffle your deck, we or I think once you shuffle your deck, we draw five cards. From where? From your deck. The the 12 starter card minions, that's called your deck. The, each player has their deck, which consists of the 12 starter minion cards, and you have a discard pile. We will go through the turns as we actually play it, so you guys got to be patient and watch. Now, set your personal is archives. Is face down drawing, or can I? Yes, the, de the deck is face down. So after you shuffle your deck, it's face down and you draw from the top. You do not draw randomly. So draw five cards. Now, once you have the five cards drawn, whoops, I keep shaking the table, excuse me. Okay, so it actually says, okay, you can only draw the cards from uh, your own deck. You can only mess with your own discard pile. Um, and actually, we are ready to set the game up. Uh, but remember, let's go through these quick few notes that it says on here. Do not shuffle your discard pile until you need to draw another card until your uh, deck has run out of cards. As your cards are discarded or destroyed, place them face up on top of your discard pile. So that's how you refill up your discard pile. And basically, that is the mechanic of refilling your deck because the object of the game is to make your opponent take as many of the three types of wound cards. So when the, the game ends, when the very last wound card is taken by a player and whoever has the most wound cards uh, loses. So with you guys knowing the objective, we, can, we should be able to get started. Uh, also, the other two notes are that when a card is exiled, it's completely removed from the game and it does not go to a discard pile, deck, or the archive. And this includes when wounds are exiled. So that's important to remember that. Uh, now, since we are ready to actually start the game, here we go. Uh, we just need to come to a mutual agreement of who's going to go first. And I think, Doug, since our guest friend here, Sam, is new, just as new to us, I think she should go first. Or maybe you because you're awesome. Uh, we can give it to her. Okay, we can give it to her. All right. So you're gonna go first, Sam, by uh, picking up your five cards. Now, your your first five cards are going to be are going to be free because all their intuition in the center is zero. So on the combat, the beginning, the first phase in the turn sequence is the combat phase. The combat phase means all player, all minions that a player controls must attack. And then after the tax resolved, you discard all the minions in play, unless one of the minions has an in-play effect that says it stays in play, even after uh, combat resolves. Which um, Bad Smoke does have that effect, which is one of the beginner minions, so that's important to note that. Um, so she is not going to be able to do anything in her very first combat phase. What she's going to do is skip her combat phase and she's going straight to the chain phase. The chain phase is where you link 
where you link the pictures of the moons, the, the big moon, to one of the colors of the little moons. So, she is going to start off by placing uh, one of her first minions. It doesn't matter, just lay, uh, place any minion down, and you're going to start the chain. Doug knows the chain. So, Doug, you're, do you want to add anything to the chain? You know how the chain works. Now, Doug is going to be, if he has any cards, He's going to be adding a, uh, a card to the stack of the chain, which he means he's going to add a red moon card, a big red moon. Okay, so he's gonna, that's okay that he laid down the same minion. He, she laid down a J.J. Matigue. Doug followed up in response and laid down a J.J. Matigue as well. Now, it is my turn to add a card to the chain, and since it is a red moon, I will lay down a J.J. Matigue. Can you lay down any other red moon no. cards? Okay, you pass. Can you, Doug? Another one. He can lay down another one. Okay, so his, his laying down is done, and I cannot either. So that finishes the chain, and the chain is ready to resolve. Now, guys, remember, this is most important. We are still in Sam's turn, but the chain works as this. First in is last out, or you could say last in is first out. So, since Doug was the last one to lay this card, his card is actually going to resolve first, not Sam's card. So, first of all, the chain effect for JJ Matigue says when it resolves, inflict two damage on target minion. Well, there's no minion in play right now at the current moment for his JJ Matigue to inflict. So, his JJ Matigue is just going to resolve, and this minion comes into play. Now, uh, this would have been your JJ, your second JJ Matigue will uh, resolve and come into play, but there's actually a minion for Sam's J, first JJ Matigue to choose where the two damage is going to go. She actually has an option. So since it's the only minion for her to inflict two damage on, she's going to do it, and she's going to actually cause first blood. So your uh, actually your JJ Matigue is dead, destroyed, and it says in play exile when destroyed or discarded. So now that Sam destroyed JJ Matigue's very first uh, minion, it is discarded, destroyed, and exec exiled from the game for the rest of the game. So her, her card stays in battle, then my JJ Matigue, JJ Matigue resolves and I will cause two, two damage to her JJ Matigue. And hers is gone and ex exiled from the game. It does not. These cards are not going to her, their discard piles. They're gone. Most starter minions are gone when they're destroyed. And then finally, who it started with, Sam's last JJ Matigue resolves, causing inflicting two damage to my JJ Matigue, and I can't uh, live. It's destroyed, and does not become uh, a part of my discard pile. It's exiled from the game. Now Sam's turn is not finished. The, the, she has two more parts of her turn. The claim phase, okay? So Sam, the claim phase says you may acquire cards from the commons of your private archives uh, by, in, uh, by spending influence. Now the commons is talking about the center cards here and your private archives. Now influence is an imaginary figure that you start with two. You start with two points of influence at the beginning of your turn every turn. So right now, Sammy has two points of influence. Excuse me. So you can gain another point, you can gain multiple points of influence by discarding cards out of your hand. Okay? So let's say she wanted to get one of these awesome, more advanced minions that cost four in the center. That means four influence. Well, she only has two. So she would have to discard two of her starter minions to get one of the more advanced minions or more advanced actions. So what I suggest, since we're first starting off and learning, I suggest we don't discard any cards in the very beginning and we only spend the two influence that we are given. And there are some two influence cards for her to grab. Now I'm going to leave that decision up to her, but I will point out to her that there's only three in, uh, cards of two influence. Either Lilith Lawrence, uh, uh, what is this girl's name? Mesmic Presence, mm -hmm. and shock, an action card called Shock and Awe. So I'm going to light a cigarette while Sam actually chooses the card she would like to have. 
And as she's finishing her claim phase, I'll let you guys know. When you end your turn, you can never end your turn with fewer than five cards. You always have to have five cards in your hand uh, during the cleanup phase, and that is where you do that. That's why it's called the cleanup phase. You clean everything up, you clean your discard pile up, and you make sure that you end the game with at least five cards in your hand. Now, to make this a drinking game, this would be fun because there, there is a theme here, but it's not that original. The drinking game will be, every time we take a wound card, it's a quarter of a shot. So, now that she, did you pick your card? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't show us, that, that goes in your hand. It's okay, this is all a trial run. So that goes in your hand. What is this there? That's just what's left over from, we were supposed to draw five from that pile to begin with. This, oh, this is your deck? Yes. Okay, so this, okay, so the best way to organize this, guys, is to put your deck on your left side of your private archives and put your discard pile on the right side of your private archives. So you know that you're, all, you're, you're touching, the, from left to right, you're touching the most important to least important, from your left to your right. Keep your minion cards in front of the opponent controlling them so each player can distinguish whose minion card is what. So Doug, let's go ahead. Setting this game up, this game is very complicated. Doug and I both agree that this game is not fun unless you have a person, because remember, we told you we we're gonna approach this as a customer perspective. This game is not fun if you are young and you just wanna sit down and get instant gratification. This is a game that you really need to understand and you've got to know these things before you can have fun. And as you can see, I've been doing most of the talking because they have to also know the turn sequence as well as you guys do too. So let's finish Sam's last phase in her turn, which is the cleanup phase. Now, Sam, do you have five cards in your hand? Yes. Okay, so she has uh, five cards or more in her hand. She can, in her turn, um, and once all four phases of her, uh, have been completed, her turn is completely over. Uh, and now the player to the left of her begins his turn, which is Doug. Now, hopefully I didn't talk too fast, Hopefully Doug can walk through his first, very first turn by himself, but we will see as we go. So, to start off your turn, you're going to start with your, uh, your combat phase, Doug, but you don't have any minions in your combat phase. So your next phase is your chain phase. So, do you remember where to go? Your chain phase is just to start laying down one of your first um, basic minions. Lay that down. Now it goes to me. So he laid down an enraged uh, wit, which is a purple moon uh, zombie card, or a ghoul, whatever. I am going to continue the stack by laying down an exact same one. So mine will resolve before his. Now the chain goes to Sam. Sam, can you connect anything to the chain? Well, it's what I just picked up You'll from over here. Which is the what? Shock and awe. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. She's playing one of her more advanced action cards, the shock and awe. The shock and awe though has a kicker effect, which she will not get. But it does connect purple, big purple moon to little purple moon, so she is good. Now it goes back to you, Doug. Can you connect anything? Uh, a white? No. You're looking for a white or a blue moon now. She totally changed the stack. Okay. So he laid down a Genesis one. And that is a white moon. I cannot do anything. I pass. And it goes back to you, Sam. Can you do anything that connects a white moon? Boom. This chain is pretty big. What about you, Doug? <coughs> all right. And I can't either. Done. Until we all pass on our chain, it is not done. When we cannot let, finish the chain, I mean, we cannot add any more cards to the chain, the sequence is done. Are you done, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so now it's resolving from the last one placed to the first one. So, this was yours? Yes. Okay, resolves first. So this is, a, this is his beginner minion, and on the chain it says exile target card from your discard pile. So you can exile a target card from your discard pile so you don't shuffle it back into your deck. If you wanted to. If not, you don't have to use the chain effect. But I think you do, but since you do not ha since Doug does not have a card in his discard pile, he does not have to worry about that effect. The minion just resolves and comes into play. Same thing <coughs> for uh, Sam's. She doesn't have any cards in her discard pile as of yet, so this one resolves. And then this second Genesis one for Doug resolves. 
and he doesn't have to worry about that yet either. Then third, Sam's shock and awe resolves, and let's read it. Your chain effect says, inflict three damage on target minion. Now this is Sam's choice. Whoever she wants to piss off more, or whoever <laughs> she wants to have fun with, she can just toy around and throw this three damage around to whoever she wants. Now Sam doesn't know this, because I didn't tell her, but the health of a minion's card is at the top. So these two red bars is two health, this is one health, and these are two health here and here. So, if for Sam to get the best bang of her buck, she should kill a minion that has two health or more, instead of a one health minion, is what I suggest. So, that is your decision. I don't have any minions out, so you have to, uh, you know, cause conflict with Doug, but go ahead and kill one of his uh, Genesis ones. How would you do that? And this goes into your discard pile. Mm -hmm. That stays there, that's your discard pile. And this says, in play, when it's exile this card, when it's destroyed or discarded. So this is not going back to Doug's discard pile, which kind of hurts him. It's exiled and just removed from the rest, from the game, for the rest of the game. Then my enraged uh, wit zomb uh, ghoul zombie thing, whatever, comes into play, and its chain effect is inflict one damage on target player. Well, I will inflict one damage on Sam. So. That means she has to take a wound card from the stack. Go ahead to take your first wound card. That wound card goes to her hand. That goes to her hand in her stack of five cards. Now, since she took a wound, uh, she's supposed to take a shot. Where is the shot glass? Great. Where is the shot glass? Right here. How convenient. So we'll try to do quarter shots. All right, because we, we don't have much. So go ahead and do your quarter shot. Cheers. Cheers. And hopefully, guys, I don't think we'll make it to 30 shots. We just don't have enough because a three-person game, remember, has a stack of 30 wound cards. Now, do, uh, th see how long these turns are? And we're not even to my turn. We're not even to the third yeah, turn. Yeah, talking a lot. So now that mine resolved and I caused the, the damage, Doug's... Uh, Ghoul resolves, and he gets to choose one damage to go to me or Sam. Who would you like that to go to? Me, of course, because uh, he just doesn't like me. So whip out the shot glass. I gotta take a shot, and I'll be taking a burn wound card, and that goes to your hand. Whoops, that was on the deck. Make sure you keep your 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 deck separate from your hand. Okay. And I will show you guys. I do not cheat myself. I pour. I'll try to pour her just the same amount as I pour myself. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, yummy. This makes it a lot more fun. So now it is time to finish Doug's turn. Since he resolved his chain effect on his minion, it now goes to his claim phase. Doug, do you want to spend... You don't have to spend your influence to buy a car, get a card from your private archive or your co uh, comments. But Doug, would you like to discard any ca cards to build up more influence, or would you like to spend your influence to gain any cards from the commons or from your <clears> archive <throat> stack? I, I'm a little bit confused because I ran out of cards. Where's your card? You know, you, where's he your ran hand? out. He played them all. Oh, okay. Well, okay. See, he played out his first hand. So he only has two. He only has two intuition. He cannot. He cannot um, uh, discard any more cards to buy influence, basically. So he needs to spend that two influence on some minion. I would suggest get the Lilith Lawrence. Go ahead and get her. Okay. Now, you are going to finish your turn with the cleanup phase. You have to draw four cards from your deck because you have to end your turn with five cards in your hand. Now, wound cards have an effect. Now, in Nightfall, all the wound cards only have one effect, but you can use the effect on your wound card uh, during, blah, it says during your cleanup phase, I think. Yes. Okay, so now it goes to my turn. The, these turns are very long. So now, since I do have a minion at the start of my turn, we're in the combat phase, my minion has to actually attack something, and I will choose to attack Doug, and my minion you you get to choose who you want which of your minions you want to block my ghoul remember my minion does two damage 
that would kill him out and he outright he has two health you might as well take let the ghoul take the two damage because he only has one health so he is dead and it says in play exile this card when destroyed or discarded so his cards are exiled gone boom finito and now I will go straight into the chain phase and I will start with a Yuri Korbov. Go ahead and go. Can anybody connect to. Well, actually, it's Sam's go. Can you connect anything? No. Can you connect anything, Doug? Yes, he's got a Korbov too. Um, and I can't. Can you, Doug? I can't finish it. Can you? You can keep going. Alright, are you done? Okay, so now that he is done, uh, it will resolve. What does it say when it resolves? Your chain, you gain two influence. So both of your minions resolve. You have six influence um, this turn, which sucks for you because you can't spend your influence on someone else's turn. But mine will resolve, and I'll gain two influence, which puts me at four. So now I go to my claim phase, and I will not discard any cards, but I will use my four influence to gain a... Uh, Mesmeric Presence and a Lilith Lawrence. How about that? And I'm ending the ending my turn with five cards. During my cleanup phase, I get to use the wound card. Uh, the wound card effect. It says, your cleanup. You may discard all wounds from your hand and draw two cards for each for each wound card discarded. Limit one wound effect per turn. So. I get to discard all wounds from my hand, which is this one, and I'm going to draw two cards, which puts me at six cards at the end of my turn. So now my wound card is in my discard pile. It's not actually in my hand. So my turn's over, and it goes back to Sam. She starts her turn off in the combat phase. Her two minions have to attack this turn. And at the end of each combat phase, that's right, I forgot. Uh, at the end of each combat phase, the uh, the minions have to be discarded unless they say they stay in game. So actually, we already made two mistakes because this car, this minion, this minion, and this minion should have been discarded into our discard piles at the end of the turn. But we're going to play through it, uh, and we're going to do it right this turn. So see, you can see how anybody, guys, can make mistakes. And that's why it's important to not just jump into anything, but what, you know, when you know what you're doing, you can identify and roll with the punches. So now first go ahead and choose which minion you want to kill stuff with. So go with that. What am I going to do now? <laughs> Throw me a cigarette, David. No, you've got to... Well, both of these are creatures, so you've got to choose. You can split up and say, oh, I want my Genesis one to attack uh, Dub. I want the JJ Matique to attack uh, Dub. Uh, because me and Dub get to choose what blocks what. Unless you have a specific card right. that says okay. that card has to block your minions. Or you can send both of your minions his way or my way. Let's do that. Okay. So... I will take the one point of damage. It's dead. I will take Yuri Korbov to take the two points of damage, and I am that guy is dead as well. So now that is done with her combat phase. At the end of the combat phase, after all attacks resolve, discard all the minions from play. So her minions are discarded. Now Hers are exiled when destroyed or discarded. So basically, whenever the uh, beginner minions are done, they're removed from game. They don't want you continuing on with those same minions over and over again. So now it goes to your chain phase, Sammy Sam. And I've got a good bit of selection of cards. I can add a lot. Can you connect anything, sir? Um, you laid a Lilith down, and I, how about, I try to lay something with a kicker effect. Oh, that's so hard, to lay something down with a kicker effect. I thought that doesn't apply when you're doing it like this. It does. Yes. Like, okay, see how this has a kicker? If the blue moon and the kicker ha matches one of the moons, the one of the small moons in the picture, you get the kicker. Or sorry, if the big moon matches the color of the big moon, you get the kicker. But I'm matching 
Uh, JJ Matig, can you match anything on the red small moon? Doug, can you match anything on a red small moon? No, sir. Uh, neither can I. I broke the chain. So my JJ Matig resolves first. Uh, basically, inflict two damage on target minion. Let's go ahead and kill his Genesis one. That's exiled from the game. Now, um, that was your Lilith Lawrence, right, Doug? It resolves. Uh, it, your chain effect on Lilith says inflict one damage on target player. Who do you want to send that to? Basically, who do you want to be drawing the wound card, me or Sam? Because whoever is doing that is going to be taking another shot. Um, I guess Sam. For all purposes. All right. She take the damage. Thank you. She's taking the beating. Unless you want it. I don't want it. So go ahead and take well, your it's wound card. Decision. It's yeah, it's Doug's decision. <clears throat> now, Doug, your minion's in play. It's resolved. And then I, you started this. Who started this? Um, that was me. Same. Dude. Oh yeah. Okay. So now this resolved. Bad smoke. Uh, it's oh this is one of, this is one of the only uh, beginner minions that goes back to your discard pile after it's discarded or destroyed and also it it takes damage for you if there's a card that says target player it takes so much points of damage bad smoke is like a wall it can take that damage for you so she's got a wall up that stays in play constantly now she's in her claim phase go ahead and discard cards if you want to get more influence to claim better cards. I don't have any, right? You start yeah. with two points of claim every That's turn. But I already took a card, so... That was last turn. This is a new turn. Oh! So this turn, you have two points of influence, again, renewed, okay. and you can discard as many cards out of your hand to get one one extra point of influence. So, like, if you want so, this like, badass card, this guy over here is a badass... Can I discard one of these? No, you can't discard a one card. Okay. Unless it says you can. Like you can use the, the you can use the wound card effect once per turn, and that discards. So like you could do the effect on the wound card right now that says, during your cleanup, you discard all wound cards from your hand and draw two cards for each. Limit one wound effect per turn. Okay. So if you discard I'm the really two wound cards, that doesn't give you influence because you're using the wounds discard effect. Does that make a little sense to you? Yeah, can I just do that? Yes, but okay. still, you're still in your claim phase first. You can okay. still claim cards and then do the wound effect. Okay. So, like, if you didn't want to discard any of your regular cards, you still have two influence. You can claim the, you can claim this, no, you can't. You can claim one of these three two influence cards from the common stack, if you want, or you can discard more of your minions to get something awesome. We're gonna do that. She likes the Lilith Lawrence because she's a hot, undead chick. Okay, now you're in your cleanup phase where you get to use your wound effect, which is where you discard all of the wound cards out of your hand into your discard pile. And then you draw two cards for each wound card that you discard. So you're going to draw four cards. Which, see, she's racking up. You see, obviously you want a big hand, which gives you options. She's actually doing the best, even though she's taking the most damage right now. Now, her turn is over, and it goes to Doug. Doug, you're in the start of your a combat phase. You have to attack with your minions right now, first off. Okay. So d you can split up your attacks or attack all together one person. But make that decision quick, because we are running out of time. So I can use all my cards to attack you? Yes, you, you have three minions. You can choose to attack all three of your minions to me, or you can split your minions' attacks up to her and me. All right, well, I'll attack you both, since you both suck. Do I, do I choose who I attack with? Yes, and then we choose who we defend with, if we have minions to defend with. Alright, I'll attack her with Lilith, and I'll attack you with the two Yuris. Attack, you're, you're attacking Sam with the Lilith? Yes. So Sam, you have to block. So you're going to block with your bad smoke. So she taps or turns her card 90 degree angles for each one point of damage she takes. She's taking Three. two points of damage. No, this oh. top figure in the top right of the card is the minion's strength which is two. So she takes two points of damage. So she goes from four, three, to two. So she's at two health. Her bad smoke is at two health. Now me is a little more complica uh, complicated situation because the Yuri Korvov does one damage which kills my JJ Matig that is exiled. And then this, J uh, this Yuri Korvov gets one damage through to me which I do take another second wound card, which is another shot, which, boom, boom, sucks.
Now, Doug, you move into your chain phase now. Now that the combat phase is over, these uh, minion cards are discarded. This minion card actually goes to your discard pile. This minion card does not. This is at, the Yuri Korval is exiled when discard or destroyed. That is one of the beginner minion cards. Remember that, guys. I'm only stressing that. When I repeat myself, I'm stressing it to you so you remember it. Now, can you start a chain, Doug? Using which? The last two cards in your hand. Start a chain. And then I can throw that down. Okay, so he's going to throw out another ghoul. So it goes to me. I can connect with a Lilith Lawrence. Sam, can you connect anything to the chain? You need to connect either a yellow, a big yellow moon, or a big red moon. And here is my shot for the second wound card. Okay, so she is going to play a bad smoke. Um, then it goes back to you, Doug. Can you do anything with a big yellow moon? Okay, so he has totally played out his entire hand. And I am going to connect a bad smoke as well. Goes back to Sam. It's going to end up being me and Sam as a big chain battle because we have the biggest hands at the moment. Can I do this? No. The big moon has to connect to one of the small moons. So at this current moment, you That's can only connect. Moon. No, your big moon has to connect to my small moon. So you have to have a big uh, yellow. Moon. That sucks. All right, I'm done. Okay, so now we're done. So the chain is going to resolve. So I'm gonna. You laid that down last, right? No, I did. That was me. That was me. So my bad smoke resolves. Then. That was his. That that's Doug's bad smoke resolves, and Sam's second bad smoke resolves as well. My Lilith Lawrence resolves. It has a chain effect. Uh, chain effect, uh, effect says inflict one damage on target player. I will give Doug a wound card. Take a wound card, sir. And take now you will take a shot. <laughs> Fill it up halfway. I don't even think they can actually see my hand. There we go, they can see my hand. Okay, so now the person who started the chain, which is Doug, his, the last card to resolve is his ghoul. His chain effect says inflict one damage on target player, so he gets to turn it around back on someone else. Well, just so we can be clear here, because we've got to ask questions, where the hell am I getting the rest of the... My next five cards, because I'm out. You, okay. will, you will get that at the end of your turn. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. So, now you need to... I forgot where you were. Oh. He's inflicting. Yeah, you're inflicting the one damage from the chain effect. So I decide who I want to hit? Yes. Uh, I'll take you down for shiver. Sure, okay, so I take a third wound card to... This goes to my... These two wound cards are in my hand. This wound card's in my discard pile. We are running out of drink very fast. So when we run out, we'll just be taking the wound cards as normal. <laughs> okay, now you go to your cleanup phase, sir. Uh, sorry, no, you go to your claim phase. You have two points of influence. You get another card. Or do you have, in your personal archives, do you have a card that costs two influence in your personal archives? Where does it say how much influence it costs? It's the number in the center of the card. The card title. This is your influence value here. This is your, No. Doug's personal archive influence values are four. That's a high curve. Keep that card right here. That's your discard pile. So, yeah. so you don't get that confused. Discard pile. So choose a two influence card from one of these three stacks. Alright, she's hot. So. Okay. So now, Doug, you are in your cleanup phase. Uh, you must draw cards, and you may resolve one wound card effect. So, and all card effects end. So, Doug, since you drew that card, you're going to draw four cards to equal five. You don't have it. So, what you have, what you're supposed to do at this point in time, you would shuffle your discard pile back into your your deck Shall and draw that answer. card. Exactly. Now, you don't have any more cards in your deck, and there is a rule that says what to do when you don't have any cards in your deck. 
This is so ridiculous. This game is really, really intensely uh, focused around your whole entire turn sequence being played outright. It would now, probably get fun after like the fifth game. You yeah, you're going to have to play multiple games with more than two people. I think this game operates at a prime number. You know, usually probably three to five people would be the best. Now, it goes to me. So, I'm going to start, first of all, by attacking you with Lilith, Doug. She does two damage. So, either you you have this bad smoke who has four health. This. Okay, so which puts him at two life left. And the bad smoke cannot attack. It's just a wall. So, now that my combat phase is over, all creatures are discarded. Bad smoke is not discarded because it has effect. The Lilith Lawrence goes to my discard pile. Then I go to my chain effect. I'm starting a new chain, which I'm going to start a new chain with Charlotte Reyes. Can you connect a blue moon? Baby girl. Okay, she lays down a Charlotte Reyes. What about you, sir? Blue moon. So with Charlotte Reyes. Well, that's uh, it for me. Can you do anything? Can you do anything again? Alright, can you do anything again? Okay, nope, that it. So, that resolves this stat. So, his two will resolve, and the chain is draw two cards. So, he doesn't have any cards in his deck to draw two cards. What happens? Well, we need to find that in this rule book. What happens? I don't know. Maybe we'll, here. Um, I know for a fact you pick up more cards from... It was here in the rule book. Uh, I can't find it, guys. So maybe I'll give it to Sam and find it. But I know for a fact we need to continue his turn. So he's resolved these two minions into play. He's supposed to draw the, the cards, but he doesn't have them. Then uh, Sam's card is going to resolve. She draws two cards. Go ahead and draw your two cards from your deck. Then mine resolves, and I draw two cards from my deck as well. Okay, so now after the uh, the chain phase, I have my claim phase. I'm going to discard. I'm going to discard a mesmeric presence. Discarding this, so now I have three points of influence, and I'm going to spend that on a Surgeon Travel. Okay. Now, I'm going into my cleanup phase. During my cleanup phase. I will use my wound effect, which you get one per turn, and it says, your during your cleanup phase, you may discard all wound cards from your hand and draw two cards for each wound card discarded. Limit one wound effect per turn. So I'm going to discard the two wound cards and end up drawing four cards, which draws my deck out. My turn is over. Goes to Sam. Okay, so Sam starts with her assault, her, her assault combat. Uh, she is going to split up her damage. I don't know, you know, who she's upset with, but that's her decision always. So remember that the attacker always gets to decide. <clears throat> to me, you're gonna attack me. Yes. Oh. All right. So make sure that if you're a, a attacking player, you're declaring that. Um, you know, I was paying attention, so I saw that. I'm going to actually save my Charlotte Reyes and block her one damage with my bad smoke, putting him at three life. She stays in battle. Are you going to do anything else? No, you can't. Yeah. So now your Charlotte Reyes is discarded, but when this card is discarded or destroyed, it's exiled from the game. Now she goes into her chain phase. Start a chain. We haven't been getting any kickers. We will. Doug, can you contribute anything to the chain? There you go. Lilith Lawrence. It's a kicker, right? The kicker only matches if the big moon connects to the colors of the saw moon. Uh -huh. So essentially, like, this will work. I think. No, I don't. I don't have anything with the kicker. So. I will lay a bad smoke. Can you guys continue the stack? Yes, sir. Yellow moon, you sure? No. 
Doug, can you continue <laughs> to stack Yellow Moon? I'm pretty sure you can't. Um, I definitely can. Does it have to be big, big or small? Doesn't matter. Oh, no, it has to be a big Yellow Moon. Okay, well. All right, so it goes back to me. And I can't connect anything, so now resolve the stack, Sam and Doug. Can I go again? Yeah, you can. Can I do that? No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now resolve the stack. Resolve. This is yours. Alright. This is mine. This is mine. No, I laid down Lilith. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, wait, you laid down Lilith? Mm -hmm. So your chain effect is one damage to target player. You're so gay. <laughs> so your start. minion resolves and that one damage comes to me, making me take another shot because I take another wound card to my hand. Then this is your turn, right? Uh-huh. So you're you started the chain, so your enraged wit ghoul comes into play and starts another chain. You get to cause one damage to another player too. Give it to Doug. He we have all the wound cards when he does it. Yeah. Doug. That's what Charlie did. Strategically you should have given it to David, but that's I'm <laughs> Why? So you guys kill me? Yeah. The. You Maybe we should. What? Kill me? Yeah. Why are you guys gonna team up on me? I didn't do anything. Oh, we'll just end the game. We have uh, probably like 15 more wound cards to go through. Mm -hmm. Alcohol says we can get close. We're gonna be out here in We can go get beer anytime before 11:45. Yeah. La 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 la. <laughs> okay. So we're okay. in Sam's turn I'm, still. Yeah. She resolved the one damage chain effect to Doug. Doug, this one wound card goes to your hand. Boom. Bam. Okay. Bam. Now she goes to her claim. Hello, Doug again, back with Doug the Treasure Store. We played for about 30 minutes without y'all watching because the battery ran out on the camera, but this is the continuation of the game uh, you already saw. Okay, so we left off uh, in a bad spot, but where we stopped to start this segment back up was with Doug's turn. So, let's get right back into it really fast. And guys, we're recording this now in HD, uh, and uh, HD on this camera only allows me eight minutes, so we gotta be quick. Um, Doug, combat phase. Attack, all, in combat phase, all minions must attack. All right, so I'm gonna attack Sam. I don't know, this is my defense card. So I'm gonna attack Sam with this, and I'm gonna attack David with this. Okay, so Sam is going to take, has to deal with one point of damage. That has to deal, we have to deal with that first. Go ahead and block with it, it's cool. All right, that puts him at one line. He doesn't die. All right, and then, damn, you're hitting me with the Ivan Ravinsky yeah, again? A forzer. a forzer, buddy. You can't really handle I that. I know. Um, actually, well, I can't because the Lilith has four life. It will kill her. Goes to my discard pile. Um, then, now, oh, yeah, go to your uh, claim phase. But before your claim phase, all uh, minions are discarded. Remember that. So these two minions go to your discard pile, except your wall. Except your wall. Discard pile. Now, you're going to your claim phase, remember? Alright, well I'm going to discard this card. Three points of tuition, uh, uh, influence. And then I'm out of card, so I have to shuffle my... No, 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 go ahead and spin this turn. Go ahead and spin the three okay. influence. And so I can go ahead and pick up him. Yeah. All right, so like I said, ooh, we're jumping right into it. And I didn't put the camera back down on the table. I was focused on all of us. Here we are, guys. Here are the cards again in HD so you can have a little bit better picture. All right, so um, you spent your influence on that card. Now you need to draw five cards in your cleanup phase. But you do not have any cards in your hand except that one. Uh, so you need to draw four cards, but you, again, like I said, you don't have any cards in your uh, deck, so now you need to reshuffle your discard pile into, and make a fresh new deck. Make sure you keep that one separate. Oh yeah, and so where we are, guys, we, <laughs> where we are, guys, we're left here with uh, three wounds, and we, we're about to run out of cards. Um, 
Like we're all at a point where our decks have run out. So Should I draw four cards for me? Yes. Yes. Alright. <coughs> oh, oh shit. New hand. Okay. Okay, you done? You got a problem here. What's the problem? No, that's fine. Okay. No. Now it's my turn. Okay, so I start with my Sir John Travel in the play, so we have to attack with him. Doug, you have really been hurting me this entire game, and I'm so sick of it, and you're open, and I want to get rid of that beginner wall. It's time to open that. I know, but you, we, we, I know we've had this. You've had this guy in play this entire game. I'm so ready to take that beginner minion out. He's such a noob. Um, so he said three damage. So that puts him at one. Oh no, one. No silly. Three damage. One, two, three. He has one life left. That, yeah. One okay. life left. All right. So my card has to be discarded at the end of the game. Uh, at the end of the phase. I'm get. Obviously, we're getting tired. Okay. So now goes to uh, chain phase. I'm going to chain into a friends or lork. Can anyone connect? Sam, can you connect my chain? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Try to find something with a kicker this time. Does that work? No. Yes. Yeah, that works. Yes. So, Doug, can you connect anything to the chain? To the chisel. Uh, it has to match the big moon. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, you've been getting kickers. Yeah. Shaboom. Okay, so now you're going to get the kicker on that as well. Oh, man. Hmm. I'm trying to, I, you go, oh, I can't really. Oh, yes, I got a card. Another Sir John Treble. Again, can you connect anything to the chain? It's back to you, Sam. Quickly now, let's finish this. Go, go, go. <laughs> Green, red, and green. No, I can't connect anything. I pass. <clears throat> she connects. Doug, can you connect anything? Ouch. Alright, goes back to Sam. Remember, you don't have to connect. You can pass. I, I, we keep stressing this because you can save your cards to discard for influence. Shit. Okay, so, so just stop there because mm -hmm. you, you need. All right, so finish the resolve. So Sam starts with you first. You get the. You're not going to get the kicker effect on this, but your minion resolves coming into play. The, what's the chain effect? Um. This is Franz or Lork, guys. Okay, so two damage on target player. Um, you have one health left on that? This? Yes. It's so, fine. if I attack you and take it out, then that would still be one more. Would he take a, a wound card? Because it takes more damage than I have here, because I only have one, would I take a wound card? No, no. Damn. So all she can do so is kill it. So it dies, and it's, it's finally exiled from the game. Okay. Now I'm completely unguarded. Yes, you're completely unguarded, but your chain is going to continue to resolve. You're going to get another Ivan Ravinsky in, and his chain. Read his chain. If, do his chain effect now. Alright. Uh, place target minion on top of its owner's deck. So you get to place... Uh, you can either place your minion on top of your deck. Um, your deck's... Put, remember, put your deck over here. You can put your minion back on top of your deck, or her min, one of her minions on top of her deck. Well, okay, so I can go ahead and take... Um, her minion. Well, you can take one of her minions out of play. Put it back on her deck. Okay. Now, the next chain resolves. This goes back to her. She gets another Baluco. It, she got the kicker on. No, she did not get the kicker on that. Why not? You didn't, because the kicker has to match the moons, remember? But, okay, it's in play. Then his kicker. He, he okay. The Baluco will actually go to you, Doug. And you yours will actually get the kicker. Read the kicker cost. All right. This is only our. This is our very. This is our second kicker. Our it inflicts one damage in play, so I'll choose to damage David. It inflicts one damage on each minion. Re oh, on each. Yes, on each minion. On uh, each minion. Okay. On 
on each minion in play. So that puts your Ravinsky at three. That kills her. Even uh, my yes, my each play each minion in play. So mm -hmm. that kills this Indigo six going to your discard pile. Puts her Valu her first Valuko at three, and then puts her Genesis yeah. one at one. Where are you at? I don't have any minions in the way. <laughs> you killed them all. Now, <coughs> uh, her big. Can you give him? No, your big ghost act uh, minion is resolving. That's what I was thinking. And you got the ch you got the kicker effect, and your kicker effect says infect, uh, inflict one damage on each player. So Doug and I are both taking a wound card, and this is going to pretty much end the game right here. Doug, there's your wound card. Here's my wound card to our hand. To our hand, we gotta take the shots quickly, quickly, quickly. We're we're trying to finish this game now. Four man, big, pretty big. You're fine, babe. Oh, Sass me. Cause I gotta take my shot quickly, Doug. Okay, so as he's doing his shot, then my Sir John Travel um, uh, resolves, and I did get the kicker. So um, let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. Like, the biggest one. Okay, so my kicker says resolve text on the next order in the chain twice. So, uh, basically, uh, uh, Sam's shock and awe is going, her chain is going to resolve twice. Basically, Sam gets to inflict twice, three damage inflicted on target minions. So she gets to do that. It basically copies that. She gets to do that twice. So choose two minions to inflict three damage on. So basically, he's the only one two open minions, or either I got my Tron, uh, my Sir John Travell to reset, uh, resolve. Yeah, so you can, we'll finish you. Yeah, but see, you, it's a copy. So you do, you get to choose three damage to me, which kills my tr um, Travell, okay. and three damage to one of his minions. So if you do three damage to this, it'll put him at one. Okay. It'll put his Veluco at one, or if you do three damage to his Ravinsky, which is nasty, it'll kill it and go back to his discard pile. Which is nasty. That's why I suggested that. Okay. Well, then let's just do what you suggest. Completely. So. <laughs> so take that. That goes to his discard pile. Okay. And then this is out. Like so? Because it's... Right? Yeah. No. This goes back to your discard pile. Okay. Now... My Lila Lawrence resolves. Sorry, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Doug's Lilith, re, uh, Lilith uh, Lawrence resolves, and he is going to get the kicker and the chain. So start with the chain. All right. Inflict on damage on target player. You don't have any uh, blockers, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a wound card. Well, that the next person that's supposed to get the wound card will end. The, actually, no. This ends the game. Wow, guys. We just ended the game because it says right here. When the last faced up wound card is taken from the wound stack and given to a player, the game ends. So that technically ends the game, but we're, we're not technically finished. Finish resolving cards in the chain. So my last card is going to resolve. You're out, and then it's between me and her. Right? Not necessarily true. we got to figure that out. See, see, guys? See, this is why this game is kind of fun, because we have been, you know, taking shots along the way for every wound card, but now we actually have a decisive victory. You know, a lot of games that leave you with a very vague victory or a stalemate, that's no fun. So hopefully right now, you guys are seeing real live footage of our very first game, and you're going to see a real, a real clear, decisive victory here. Now, let's finish resolving the, the chain before we go on to any other step. My Friends Orlock resolves. Coming into play, it is an advanced minion. Then, it's a vampire, just to give you the fluff. Uh, its fluff line says Mord von o Oben, um, but the chain effect on it is inflict two damage on target player, making Doug uh, take two damage. But we don't have any wound cards, so he should be at taking two more wound cards. But I actually got teamed up on this game, guys. Uh, and then my kicker cost, which I wouldn't have got because I started the chain. So that ends the game, and as the card says this, it says, depending on which phase it is, keep track of any additional wounds received by using the face-down cards in the wound stack. So, we go back over here. This is the other 30 cards in the, um, the other half of the wound stack that we did not use in the beginning of the game. So Doug is going to receive two face-down wound cards 
uh, because these were the exiled wound cards because we don't want to lose track of that he actually received those wounds because the game is not technically over now <clears throat> we've got to finish my turn out I was in the chain phase now I go to the claim phase and I'm going to discard I'm going to discard two of my cards a uh, friends or lurk and a shock and awe for two influence points which puts me at four so I can finally gain a Veluco. I wanted a Veluco the whole entire game now that puts me whoops sorry guys that puts me in my cleanup phase during the cleanup phase everybody hold on Doug everybody in the cleanup phase gets to use their one wound effect so I'm, di I'm using my one wound effect to discard all my wound cards in my hand that allows me to draw two cards for each wound card discarded but I'm at, we are, ended up all being out of cards in our deck so because I can't draw any more cards because I'm ending my turn I have to draw a card so I'm going to just shuffle my discard pile like you're supposed to even though the game is over and I would draw I draw six cards but it's still possible for you to win the game technically but we, because we don't know how many wound cards we've just been playing and uh, now Doug these are your two wound cards now go add up all your wound cards and I'm gonna add up my wound cards and guys it's it's in total think of your workstation I, I haven't said this term but I developed a term the workstation think of your workstation as the in total area where your deck you, to your private archives to your discard pile and your active cards in play the chain the minions and the actions that are resolving think of that as your workstation now the uh, wound cards in your workstation would be in your deck your hand and your discard pile so we're all three counting up our wound cards right now to see who has won the game by receiving the least amount of wound cards so Doug please count your wound cards I did and all of them yeah and, and I'm pissed off if I didn't win because that's bullshit well how many wound cards do you have in total? Five. That's well, it? No. That's it. That's I received the least amount of wounds the entire game. Well then you probably won't. Okay, we had we're having major technical difficulties tonight, but we feel honestly like the the game is themed around uh surprise attacks that you get in your private archives and the drafts. But more or less we found it out being um, an ability to match out your chains and your kickers just to cause as much damage to inflict as many wounds as possible and it ended up not being about strategy it ended up being about a draw mechanic and ramping into a giant hand and giant deck because the more cards you're discarding that's the main mechanic in this de uh, deck building game guys when you're discarding cards you're building up influence to draw more cards to spend your influence to draw more cards from the common stack. Now, I do like that. I do like the feature of the draft, you know, which does randomize the game when you're setting it up. But now, you know, the major complaint I saw from Sam and Doug while we were playing the game is why do certain things have to be this this way? Why why can I draw this card or you know why why do we have to resolve these things in this order? But you know like as we saw as the game went on certain things just have to be and they click and this rule book sometimes is very vague and that's why guys we jumped right into the game and showed you live gameplay because the best way to learn this game we saw after reading the re rule book was just to jump in and play it and that's the best results we had and hey guys from your perspective what do you think about playing this game like as your honest opinion I mean you can be brutally honest or you can be I think it's entertaining I mean do you honestly think this is a a, a valuable game to spend your money on do you see if us we were to play again it would be much smoother mm -hmm. yeah no I mean there's no doubt about it if we played it again it would be completely repolished up you know we, we would have no problem whatsoever I think setting the game up and actually getting started but I think even after like playing the game a uh, hundred times, two hundred times, like you would Monopoly, there's, it seems like there's always something new to do. Now this game does seem like every time we play a new game, there will be new opportunities to do new actions, but it doesn't necessarily seem like there is you know strategy in this game like you can have strategy in Pokemon, strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Yu strategy in Magic. So I would consider this game to be a three, at most, 3.5 stars out of five stars. What do you guys rate it out of five stars? 
3.5. So we have two general consensus of 3.5 stars. What do you say, Doug? I'd say three, but I'd like to play again. Okay, so Doug says three stars, but he would like to give it a rematch. So, you know, I kind of agree with that. that. Now that I understand the basics of the game, I think it would be much more fun if if we played again. You know, and I mean, that's just like with a, any deck that you build in, you, in the three mainstream games, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Magic. You build a deck, and you play it, and you rebuild it, and you play it, and you repolish it. So, guys, like I said, we will have, in total, we will not keep you hanging on a cliffhanger. In total, we will have a four-person game reviewed and a two-person play, player game reviewed. And now we have our first game reviewed, which was a three-person well, game. So you guys are going to be set with tons and tons of content to go through and watch all of our video archives. We suggest you guys follow us on our blogs at dubstreasurestore.com forward slash blog. Also follow us on our mobile updates at Twitter at dubstreasurestore.twitter.com and also you can follow us at our eBay stores where we will be sell selling all kinds of peripherals relating to the, the specialty games because remember that I said in our very first segment of the Nightfall installation Doug and I were compartmentalizing the specialty games into our eBay store to make it easier for our web store shoppers to get a hold of our games. So, as we have reviewed this game, you should be able to see all this gameplay video and make your decision if this is the right game for you. Because we always want to let you know the latest tips, tricks, and strategies on every review guide we give you so now you know the very first game that we played with Nightfall was a complete live run through we did have a few technical difficulties but we're so glad you made it to the end with us and that is our call to go thanks guys have a great alright I was wrong I had more wound cards than I previously thought I had and the correct winner of the game that you just watched is Samantha so big props to Samantha first game we've ever played she wins yeah so because of those technical difficulty guys um, you didn't get to see us arguing about uh, us correcting all our wound count but that's why you know I was talking about the workspace coining that term because Doug did not go back and check to count his discard pile and his deck he had one wound card in his discard pile and one wound card in his um, deck so he thought he won but when we went and counted those two extra and we went and counted and found those two extra cards that put him right next to me which made Sam win so you know like I was talking about when we were giving you the uh, turn sequence instructions you know I said the tiebreakers for this game were insane we totally did not even see Sam coming out on top we, we really honestly thought the entire game Doug was gonna win and I righteously should have <laughs> <laughs> And in conclusion, this was a fun uh, learning experience, and uh, again, if we're going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Yep, so. 3.5 out of 5 for now, and uh, you will have, you'll see uh, a few more uh, minutes of closing this segment out. Doug, are you still sticking with your 3 out of 5 stars? I'm giving it 3, but I think the next time we play, it would be much more fun. It's not the kind of thing you jump right into, but once you get the hang of it, I think it actually could be fun. No. Oh yeah, and, and Sam, last thing to close on. I, I think um, they're not seeing the very end, so we are kind of jumping a step ahead, but you know, that critique you were telling me about when we turned the cameras off, about how you thought all the work you had to do about learning the game, explain that again, for the means of the end of just the wound cards being the win, that wasn't... Say that in a sense that we can under people can understand that there's a clear decisive victory in nightfall but there's there's a lot of steps and there's a lot of detail to playing this game and then but upon closing when you are ending everything just boils down to how many wound cards one has and i think that uh at first glance that it just appears a little bit too simple but for the work for the work but all that work leads up to you either getting the wound cards or giving them so all in all it's really just fine yeah and and as much as that may sound as a negative thing that's the only negative thing we have to say honestly and you guys saw 
throughout every turn when we were chaining stuff until the end we were always making decent sized chains and we were forgetting to discard to get influence but once we started chaining out really really big we were getting kicker calls and you saw that last turn when we turned our camp when we finally got our camera back up that we were getting that mega chain with all those kickers and we were doing all those effects in just one person's turn that's what we like about nightfall is that it does seem like one giant awesome uh, battle once you get going but the going is you know it is tough to get going so we again we're gonna stick with our rating until we get to the other views uh, uh, perspectives on the twos and fours so you guys uh, continue watching shot. yes exactly <laughs> lift it up a little more give it up more than one shot and continue to watch us guys thanks